Hello, this is Rory with the Love Chat, and today's topic is Why do breakups happen? Now, this is video number 52. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe and hit like. So, I must apologize, I have been sick for about seven days straight, and I'm finally starting to feel better. So, you might be able to hear it in my voice a little bit, but I wanted to make a video for you guys because I know that uh, there's a little, little long stretch of time without one. So, we're going to try and hit them as hard as we can going forward. Now then, why do breakups happen? So, I'll set the scene. You are at work, at school, at a university, whatever. And you meet somebody of the opposite or same gender. And you think to yourself, wow, this person is really attractive. And this is somebody I'd like to date and make, you know, mine. Because within dating comes security, right? So you talk to them, you get closer to them, they like you, they like what you're about, and eventually you both decide to enter a healthy relationship. Now, along the course of the relationship, it's going great, year one's great, year two is great, or maybe month three is great, month four is great, doesn't even matter. But somewhere along the relationship, there's a dynamic shift. Something changes and something happens. Because in a relationship, when you both decide to be exclusive to one another, or whatever the case really may be, there is an agreement formed, which basically says that I want you as you are. What you did leading up to this point has attracted me, and I wish to spend my time with you, and I wish to get to know you even more, and to find comfort in you, and to find other types of pleasures in you. And so... As was stated, time goes along, things are going great, and then eventually there's a shift. Something changes. Either there's too many big fights, and they start associating you, or you start associating them, with negativity and fighting. Because we have to remember that within a relationship comes attraction. And so when your mind turns away from attraction, and you adopt this mentality of, well, I just have them, they're here. I don't, I don't need to date them anymore, they're here, I have them, they're mine. That's my girlfriend. That's my boyfriend. When we adopt this very unhealthy mentality, it begins to show over time because treat them as a mirror. And when you look at them as a mirror, it's a reflection of how you're treating yourself. So I want you to think about this. If you are hanging out with your partner and they say, you know what? It's, it's been a while since we've gone out. I'd really like to go out da uh, maybe dancing. And you're kind of like, man, eh, maybe later. I feel like staying home and playing Fortnite. No, maybe later. I just want to stay home and watch the news. Ah, maybe later, you know, I just, I just want to go on Facebook and hang out on my phone. That sticks with them. So the things that you were willing to do at the beginning of the courtship, which was put your best foot forward, show your best self, do things that maybe you wouldn't do before, go new places and try new foods, those are all there prior to being in a committed relationship where some time has passed and now, you know, maybe it's six, seven months in and you feel pretty comfortable, pretty safe. So when those things begin to change, you are effectively turning your ex off because what they're kind of scratching their head and saying is, well, hold on, you didn't, you, you showed me a completely different person at the beginning of the relationship and you've changed the reason that I agreed to enter this relationship. You've changed the terms of the contract. Now, is this to say that some days you don't feel like going out dancing and other days maybe you do? That's totally fine, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the general themes here, right? At first, if you were somebody who was very upbeat and very happy and fun, and then six, seven months in, all you can manage to do is complain and, you know, moan about your life to your ex, you're shifting that, right? That's the shift I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So, what we need to remember to do is always maintain the version of ourselves that we want to show to our ex. Not because we want to show them something that we're not, but we want to show them that we are putting our best foot forward, that they're worth it, and we expect the same, right? Because if you flip this video away from you and towards your ex, in other words, you just broke up with your ex, and the reason you broke up with them was because there was just so much anxiety, so much complaining, so much arguing, um, maybe there was cheating, Maybe, you know, a thousand different circumstances. But the point is, if your ex acted one way when you got in the relationship with them and they completely 180'd, 
or rather, they let themselves begin to get really lazy and they didn't try to date you, they didn't go out of their way to make you feel special, you're going to feel the same exact way. And in fact, I'm sure you've had relationships in your life where perhaps didn't go so well because of that. What's really important to remember within attraction is that we need to associate our ex, our significant other, rather, with fun, with ease, with comfort and excitement and adventure. But a big reason that many divorces happen, at least in the United States, is because we begin to associate our ex with problems, with our child isn't doing well at school, with financial burden, with taking out our frustration at our job on our significant other. We forget to court and date our partner. And so what I want you to remember going forward is that breakups happen because we change the terms of the agreement and our ex usually isn't good with those changes. And so we have to be very careful and very deliberate when we're in a relationship. Now, anxiety never helps either. And when you notice that your ex isn't happy with your performance in the relationship and they begin to pull away from you, the anxiety increases, becomes more, and then they sense that you're anxious, further changing who they thought you were. You attracted them. So what I want you to do during your next courtship phase with a new person, write down what you're doing. Write down how often you guys are going out. Write down where you're taking them. Write down the little things that they say to you that make you feel good, like you're doing a really good job and, you know, I can't believe you bought me flowers this day. I didn't expect that. There was no reason for that. Or we went out, you know, dancing and that was a lot of fun and I can't believe that you took me out there. That was so much, you know, thank you so much. Those little things matter and you want to hold on to those. And I realize I'm a little loopy from the medicine today, but really understand the main point of what I'm trying to say here. You show them one person, you change into another person, and then you expect them to be attracted to that other person. We're not talking about big dramatic changes, but we are talking about making sure the relationship has maintenance. And that maintenance is dating and courting, making your partner feel attractive, staying fun and positive, not worrying about if someone else comes up to your girlfriend and hits on her at the bar, because frankly, that's the best compliment he could give you. Is he saying, I desire what you have, and I'm mad that this person's going home with you. So you go, hey, thank you, appreciate it. Jealousy has no place in a healthy relationship because jealousy stemmed from fear. And so what I really want you to think about is, what are your motives for being in a relationship, right? Are you ready to be in a relationship? And if you're listening to this and you're in a breakup, what can you learn from this channel, from your breakup, from other channels, so that you can have the next healthy relationship moving forward? And so the next relationship that you have is the last one you'll ever need. That's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Also, if you'd like to do a Skype or email coaching, be sure to visit thelovechat.net slash coaching. Until next time.